Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Wednesday night, uh, you know, our late night diversification talks, just like every Wednesday, I'll be your host. Last Wednesday, unfortunately, we, we couldn't have our, you know, a regular session because, as I told you in the groups, um, my daughter was graduating from high school, and uh, as you know, it is always a big party in North America for high school graduation. So, you know, I had to be the chauffeur and I had to take her here and there from school. You know, I was the limo, limo driver and uh, that's why I couldn't attend. And even our session on Thursday uh, did not happen. Uh, this is for those who are with me in the group project where we put money together to, to buy the biggest packages on some of the projects that we are in uh, because... Uh, even on that Thursday, you know, uh, they they kept having some other ceremonies, and uh, and I had to also cancel my Saturday because I was so tired. Anyway, it's all done. Um, so we are back today. So welcome to the late night diversification talks. My name is Pascal Defo, as you all know, and as always, I'll be your host. Um, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an investment advisor. I call myself a venture capitalist, maybe not at the same scale as big venture capitalists that would put in millions of dollars, if not hundreds of hundred thousands of dollars uh, in projects that they join. Um, you know, the projects that, they, that I join allow me to bring in a small capital as a small venture capital, uh, capitalist uh, to participate in projects that normally I would never had a chance to participate in. So, and some of you might have, you know, seen some of my videos and decided to join me. Now, you decided to join me. I didn't go looking for you. And it's very important you understand that it means you made the decision to join any of the projects that you uh, chose to participate in. This is because, um, you know, when it comes to new technology, because all these projects that I'm talking about revolve around the blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. This is a new technology. It might have been around since 2009, but it's still very new. It, it is actually just getting accepted by institutionals and governments. So that means it is still a realm of huge um, scammers. So be very careful. I like to remind people that at least 98%, and I said at least 98% of the projects that you see around that industry, that technology, is a scam. It is not a scam because it's going to fail. It's a scam because it is made, it is built as a scam. Most of you don't do your due diligence and you end up losing money simply because you don't want to do your proper due diligence and only get involved with projects that have a chance to succeed. Most of you only go for money, high risk, high return. 99.9% .9 of the high risk, high return are scams. Okay, 99.9% .9 of the high risk, high returns are scam. And the 0.1% that are not usually don't make it Okay, or at least the majority of it don't make it. It is important you understand that. So before you put any dime in anything, be sure that you're only putting money you can afford to lose because the moment you do that, make sure you write it off because the majority, even those that are not scam, have a very high likelihood of failing. If all what I said still did not scare you, then you're welcome. Then we can go and do this properly. Um, you will notice that many projects that I've joined, I'm actually, I'm actually slowly backing off projects. Like, you know, um, I'm like this gold digger. You know how it works with gold digging, right? You start with mud. You start with mud and water and you keep rinsing that mud with the hope that you're going to find a gold nugget. And 
nine out of 10 times, you find nothing. You just find rocks and then you throw everything away and you start over. Sometimes you may spend 10 years on the same spot and never find anything. It means you are at the wrong spot. But the moment you find a nugget, it means there could be, you know, um, I don't know how you call that, but uh, there could be a line of gold in that area and you could continue, you know, digging. That's how I see myself. Um, some people, you know, go for the high risk, high return. Me, I go for where I can find a nugget and I keep digging in that area. I don't go around looking for, you know, uh, playing lottery or hoping that, uh, you know, I could grab here and there and then uh, whatever happens next to whoever joins me, too bad for them. No, I go where I think there's a chance to find a nugget. I personally think I found some nuggets, some places. If you feel you have found the nuggets as well, then why would you go around jumping here and there? Because what, end up, what ends up happening is that you earn something. You, you take the nuggets that you found instead of multiplying it using, let's say, compounded interest system. You take it and you put it somewhere else on a high risk, high return project, because you're thinking to yourself, oh, I need to diversify. That is not diversifying, that's stupidity. Because if what we do here every Wednesday hasn't taught you how not to do it, then um, maybe you should go back to the basics. I'm pulling myself slowly because I learned to identify those ones that are just you know, um, the same or uh, that are just the same of the old thing that we already know. And if I know that, there's no point for me wasting time, you know, jumping from one project to another. I could, it doesn't mean I'd never ever going to join any other project. So if I find something that in my humble opinion has a potential to, to, show, to do something, I will join it. Um, because at the end of the day, a venture capitalist joins projects with, you know, projects that have a chance to become something. And then, uh, but they know that the majority will fail. And those that will not fail will actually bring enough return so that, you know, whichever one have failed can still, you know, the, uh, the one that will succeed will make up for the failure or for the losses. It is very important you yourself develop that mindset and stop jumping from project to project, especially now with the bull run around the corner, even though the Bitcoin keeps jumping up and down, up and down. But with the bull run around the corner, um, you will see even more scams coming around you will always have the impression that, oh, this one looks like one that was around before. And usually what they would do, they would throw in the latest you know, trend, or uh, they will tell you, oh, it's AI based, or they would come up with some stupid moves trying to fool you. But the thing is, even if they don't fool you, there's still so many people they can fool with those scams and they will still make money a lot of the scams will still have a good day, a lot of like a huge highway in front of them because, because of the low adoption of the blockchain and cryptocurrency so far. You won't imagine how much people, how many people, how big the percentage is of people that have no idea what cryptocurrencies is. So when they, when they see those uh, projects that show up, for them, it's, it's going to be like, oh, my God, this is good. I got to jump on this. So there's still so many people that will be falling for those scams. I hope you are not amongst them. And I hope that you also educate people in your surrounding, people around you so that they do not fall. Be the one that have paid the price so that others in your family, in your you know, surrounded friendship, don't have to pay that same price. It is very important. And once you think you found one nugget, keep digging in that area. 
no need to jump to be jumping around. It's, that is the perfect recipe to lose whatever you earn somewhere else. Okay, so it is important we understand that, and um, and then we can uh, we can give ourselves a chance. We can give ourselves and and our families a chance, especially for those of you who are community builders, because. The chance you have as a community builder is that you can create, once you found the nugget, you can actually create a lifetime passive income. You don't need to be running around. And as a community builder, I always say community builders never lose. But what legacy do they leave behind? The people that follow them, what do they think of them? Because you never lose. We, as community builders, we never lose because... We always have referral rewards, referral bonuses that end up help us make whatever we put in. So we end up not losing. Of course, we do some effort. We educate, we talk about the product, we present, we show, we, you know, we, we make videos and so on. But still, at the end of the day, we make some money, maybe not a lot, but those who join us sometimes if they only rely on the project itself they end up not making much and if we jump from one project to the next it just keep creating misery so let us focus on the ones that have the potential to help the greater majority and not just us all right chavez's updates explanations from june 19th, 2024. Um, I'm sure your patience and mine too have been put to, uh, <laughs> to test here. Uh, one thing it's important, always remember that whatever you do, whatever is a good thing, never comes easily. The birth of great men, women, and product is painful and requires a lot of patience. Chavez started by, you know, he praised the community patience so many times already. Why? Because of the, con you know, constant delays. Um, he also mentioned the other day that the old affiliate, in the old affiliate marketing projects don't run, they run away. Um The other day, not a week ago, but two weeks ago, when we had this very Zoom, I said to you, you know, Chavez at that, on that day was uh, the 5th of June. Chavez announced that Chavez announced that the uh, the launch was happening. I believe uh, it was the next week or something. Anyway, there was a big announcement. And I said to the group, do not, you know, you got to manage your expectations because at the time, I believe the uh, audit, the code, uh, the security audit was done. Uh, the only audit that was not done, the only audit that was not done was the code audit. And uh, with the code audit not done, um, you know, I was telling people, whenever we talk about audit, you never know until the audit response has come back from the auditor. Simply because the auditor can go over whatever you sent to them and uh, get back to you and tell you, oh, you know what? You need to change this. You need to change that. And sometimes the change could be so important that you know, it ends up taking longer than you promise your community or your customers or your clients. And then, you know, it makes you break your promise. And I said to my people, my community on that day, you can go back and watch that Zoom. I said, it may still not happen. I wish I was wrong. I wish I was wrong. I wish I was wrong because it did not happen. We did not launch. And then 
Chavez came back and told us, oh, I got the uh, audits and everything is good and it's we're going to launch and this and that. Unfortunately, we didn't have a Zoom last Wednesday, um, but Chavez had planned to be there on Friday because he said that we're launching this week. That was last week. Uh, no matter what happens, we're launching. Uh, you know, we waited on Friday. We waited on Saturday. We waited on Sunday. And unfortunately, we still did not launch. So are we going to launch tomorrow? Are we going to launch this week? Have you managed your expectations? Have you learned to manage your expectations? Have you stopped promising to anybody? I'm not talking to Chavez. I'm talking to you. In the groups, in the Telegram groups, in my Telegram groups, I guess many have learned because they stopped promising and they started saying, as I say, Boomerang is going to launch when Boomerang launches. When it comes to creating a product, you never know. There's always a curveball around the corner. And that is why when it comes to product launching, product development, it's always very dangerous to make promises, especially on set dates, because you never know especially when you have dependencies. Now I'm using Chavez's own words. When you have dependency, a dependency is when something you have to do depend, depends on a third party. An audit is a third party. Um, something that has pushed this launch back over and over is a simple thing. Chavez has realized at one point that his first intent that was to give the community, I'm not talking here about the We Are All Satoshi community, I'm talking about the blockchain community, something that would actually advance the way people interact with liquidity pools using flash loans, um, you know, would revolutionize the whole market. What actually um, made him change his mind is all the copycats that started coming out. Oh, we're going to launch next week. We're going to launch this. We're going to launch that. And managed to actually even steal the attention of WAS community because Chavez was basically delaying due to other issues he had found along the way, like um, you know, like, um, how do you call it? Scaling of the platform. So that has decided Chavez to go from an open source because auditor, auditors were never in the picture at the beginning. It was an open source program and code that people could go and copy. That's why the copycats were able to go and copy and copy to the point that they even copied the transactions from the blockchain. So it went from an open source that did not need an auditor to a closed close source where people cannot see the source code, and but that would require an audit to happen. Why do you need an audit on a project like this? You need an audit to prove that, you know, anything that is, um, you know, private and but that you plan on putting out there for the general public to use, you need to have it audited to make sure at least, you know, a third party had looked at it and said, this is safe. This, there's no backdoor, there's no this, there's no that. This product is safe for the public use. So that is the reason why auditors came into the game. But I guess either Chavez is too optimistic or you know um, he got given dates that he thought a oh, very optimistic date without taking into account that he was going into a weekend 
without taking into account that the um you know there was um a muslim celebration uh you know on that particular weekend going into the monday uh which has led potentially to um another one of failed promises um as it stands right now uh mvp launch when is it according to um let me see according to the timer according to the countdown that we have on the dap right now and if you don't know where is the dap you go to boomerang.dev d e v as in victor so according to the countdown that is currently on the dap the count the uh, the launch is set for june 21st 2024 at 8 a.m eastern time of course this is my own conversion i took the timer at the time it was uh you know launch in one day 16 hours and 15 minutes something like that when i did the math but if you do the math based on what is there right now you should fall on this particular time which is June 21st, which is Friday, because today's Wednesday, at 8 a.m. Eastern time, which is the New York and Toronto time. That is what the countdown is set for. But it will only happen, right, if everything goes well. Is it possible that something may not go well? Well, I don't know. We had so many failed launch already. So anything is possible. Manage your expectations. If it works and we trade, great. I personally would have expect to see a demo trade today. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. But, but, um, I'm a positive guy and my glass is always half full. So the URL boomerang.dev is a positive thing. We didn't have it until a few hours ago. We didn't know what the official uh, URL is or was going to be. Now we do have a URL, which is a positive thing. So that puts us one step closer to the launch. So let us be positive and see that and celebrate that. And let us hope, you know, having a countdown, personally, to me, it means nothing. Okay, I'll be honest. Having a countdown means nothing. Having a countdown is the same as is Chavez has said, oh, we're launching uh, on Friday at eight. That's the same as the countdown. Again, don't get me wrong. I still think Chavez is genuinely real and is trying to bring this thing out. He's trying to prove so many people wrong and he's ha he has my 100% support, if not more. Okay, don't get me wrong. I'm just stating facts and asking you to manage your expectations when it comes to product development. Okay, so... I I I want I wanted to see a demo of a trade. I'm sure the majority of the community would have loved to see a demo of a trade. Um, Chavez just said he did one. Uh, I believe Lucky also did another one. Uh, how's it gonna look when the entire community is going to? jump on this thing and start trading i don't know but we'll find out right we'll find out on friday 8 a.m new york time toronto time that's when we're gonna find out so you can do the math to find when that time is for you so what comes next what comes next is that if we launch if we launch Right? Until we launch, we haven't launched. Until we actually 
each of us do a trade and see it go through, just consider it hasn't happened and manage your expectations just so as not to get disappointed. If we launch this coming Friday, Chavez is planning starting next week to talk about a new project that he said he has discovered in the process of uh, developing Boomerang. What that is going to be, I don't know. But I guess we are going to find out. So that's all I had for you tonight. Let me stop sharing. Any questions? No questions? Yeah, that's us go. We still have a question. Is the boomerang thing the same as the wasp thing? Um, yes and no. Was is just a community. Was is just a community. And within that was community of people, a first product was developed. And that product was that product is called the blockchain, the Bitcoin code blockchain, also known as the BTC20 blockchain. And then we can buy miners and mine the BTCC on that particular blockchain. That's another product. It is our main product. Beside that product, since about December, we got introduced to a second project, which this one here is called Boomerang. And what Boomerang is about is basically, um, uh, you know, a tool that allows us to borrow money from the market and trade with that money without any collateral. We don't need to put anything. We don't need to, you know, we can borrow as much money as we want without putting any collateral. Um, all you need to do is buy a license. When you buy a license, it basically gives you a certain limit of profit, a profit ceiling that you can trade with that license until you, let's say, doubled or tripled your money. It was triple until last week. Now it's only double your money. Where does the money come from? It comes from the market. The market has money, a lot of money under what is known as pool, liquidity pools. In the liquidity pools, you have that money sitting there because people have put money there for the platform to pay them like 3% or 5 or 15 or 20% per year, depending on, you know, whatever deal they have with the platform. Now the platform needs to have that, put that money to work. One way that was recently discovered or, you know, created to put that money to work is the use of so-called flash loans. And the flash loan is basically uh, something, a smart contract that you have to put in place and borrow whatever amount of money you want from the liquidity pool as long as you can pay it back with a very little tiny um, uh, with a very little tiny transaction fees or service fees. Uh, as long as the transaction happens within, let's say, 30 seconds. And yes, it may sound like, uh, oh, how could that happen? Yes, it's possible if you are smart enough to put together a smart contract that can do that. You can borrow that money. You can arbitrage with it, meaning buy one crypto, sell it, and pay the money back within 30 seconds. And that is what Boomerang is about. You good, Geraldine? Yes, thank you. So oh. the project we did last, Last August. I remember last August we did a project. Sorry, sorry, say that again. I said I remember last last August we did a project that um, we did a project that I um I think it was 2700. Is that a boomerang or the uh, um the Bitcoin thing? Um, no, that one, that one that you're talking about is, um, that one is, what project is that one? 
No, that one is the uh, 20, is the, no, 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 it's the WAS project, sorry. It's the nodes. Yeah, oh, I get it now. Nice. Yeah, that one is a node. Okay. You're constantly receiving BTCC. I don't, I, I don't know if you even go and check that, Geraldine, but you're constantly yeah. receiving, <laughs> you're receiving BTCC. <laughs> we put money together to buy a node and a validator. Uh, so we yeah. have nodes and validator. And basically once a month, we distribute whatever BTCC that was generated by the node that we purchased and the validator that we purchased. Oh, okay. Oh, I remember. Oh, I remember about that project is that it was a group project. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, how that's... do I check for that? <laughs> okay. Connect tomorrow. Tomorrow we have the 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 Zoom call for the project. Mm -hmm. Then we can, uh, I can help you set it up and make sure everything is fine and make sure and show you where it is. It's on MetaMask. Okay, so it's on MetaMask. Oh, okay. So it's piling up. It is piling, piling up. up. Yeah, it is piling okay. up. Oh, okay. I see. I'll let it pile up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it's better if at least you can locate where you have it. But uh, yeah, no, you're anyway, getting paid. It's true. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, thank you. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> Any other question before I let everybody go? Yes, Bev. Beverly, go ahead. You're muted, by the way. Hello, you hearing me? Now, yes. Um, yes. Um, the Zoom link for tomorrow. You're gonna post it in the chat. Um, I've okay, okay. Uh, you want because the Zoom link for tomorrow is usually just the for those who are already in the group project. I can actually add you to the group project because not everybody in that group project are actually are, are already um contributing or have already contributed, mm -hmm. but at least they show that they are interested. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I will add, my yeah, I think I'll actually add you to that group. Um, and, and same for Mbono B. Uh, if you're interested, I'll add you to that group so at least you can live from within the group what is happening. I think Sean also is interested, but I'm not sure if Sean is already in that group. So um, send me messages. I think you have my uh, Telegram contact, right? Yes, yes. And okay. also, you have, what you just spoke to the lady about there is, is the same thing with the sports. No, that was for the nodes. You, it, that was for was and um and was nodes and validator. Since so they still sell in it. They still have. No, no, we that one they, they don't sell uh, nodes and validators anymore. So, but in the future we can always uh, go back to getting a new one. So, uh, mm -hmm. if you're already in the group projects with me I always uh, bring it up and then we can uh, we can talk about it okay thank you okay. you're very welcome um bono b i don't know if you're still here if you want to um if you want to join the group project if you want to join the group project please reach out to me i'll send you the uh the um the telegram uh, invite link so that you can join that group. At least you can live what we do there from, from within the group. Okay. Thank you. I will do. Okay. So reach out to me. Thank you very much, everyone. It was, as always, a pleasure to, uh, to be hosting uh, you like every uh, Wednesday. Um, so for those who could not attend, the uh, a summary will be posted or a video will be posted so that they can also uh, watch. On this note, I'd like to um, you know, wish you all a very good evening. Bye for now. Lega Pascal, I'm so sorry to bother you. Know, I'm back again. <laughs> One last question. Okay. So the link, the link for the group project tomorrow, is it going to be um, posted as a Bitcoin group project? Um, group on yeah. Yeah, it's posted in there the as well. Coin. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, thank you so much for your help. No See problem. You tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.